everyone, it's Missy, and today I'm making zesty salsa. And the first thing I did was I quartered my tomatoes and put them in my Roma food strainer. This is a food strainer I bought from Walmart.com. The link will be in the description below if you're interested. I have the salsa screen attached, and I need to have 10 cups of chopped cord peeled tomatoes. And this strainer, as you can see with the salsa screen, I'm going to be able to peel, it's going to peel and core my tomatoes for me, and it's going to leave more of a chunky um, texture to the tomatoes versus the tomato sauce screen. And this works out really slick. You can do a lot of tomatoes really quick. And I'm using red tomatoes for this recipe. You can use um, any kind of tomato really, it says in the instructions in the book. With the tomatoes, we are also going to be adding one and a quarter cup cider vinegar, three cloves of garlic finely chopped, two tablespoons of chopped cilantro, and one tablespoon salt. And you're also going to want to add five cups of chopped seeded green bell peppers. And I just run my knife around the pepper, and this will allow me to move the membrane um, from the actual pepper in one slice. And then I chop them either into thirds or quarters, and I put them in my food processor. And I like using my food processor to chop up my vegetables. It gives it a nice fine texture, and it also speeds up the process, because I'm not the best when it comes to using chef knives. You're also going to see in the processor when I use this that it's going to get foamy, and that's because of the water. Um, that comes out of the vegetables. I don't strain this off. I actually pour it into the pot and you'll see that later. I do the same with my onions. I cut them into quarters and you want two and a half cups chopped, or five cups chopped onions, excuse me. And using a food processor, you want to pulse it just so that way you make sure you get it the right consistency that you want. And as you can see, I kind of chop up the onions pretty fine. And then lastly, I have two and a half cups of chopped seeded chili peppers. I used jalapenos. Um, you cap them and then I took a spoon and tried to scoop out the seeds in the membrane and then I put them in the food processor to uh, chop them up. And just be careful not to burn your fingers. Um, you can wear rubber gloves and the smell <laughs> can knock you out when you open up the lid. So make sure you stand back. So you have the lids and the jars both in the hot water simmering, make sure they're not boiling, but they're staying hot, and then I poured all the ingredients into my pot, and if you want to you can also add one teaspoon of hot pepper sauce, which is optional. As you can see it's really foamy, and I again that's from me using the food processor to chop up my veg, and it looks like it's going to spill over, but it didn't. I was thinking I needed a larger pot than that, but it boiled down and I was fine. So you want to bring it to a rapid boil and let it, and light, let it slightly thicken, which takes about 10 minutes. Um, I overcooked mine, so mine was pretty thick by the time I was ready to can it. But I do like thicker salsa, so that wasn't a big issue for me. But it did turn brown in the canner because it was overcooked. So next you're ready to fill up your jars. And I used 8 ounce jars. It makes eight. 12 8 ounce jars or you can use 6 pint jars and you want to fill the jars up so there's a half inch of head space and we are going to boil both the 8 ounce jars and the pint jars for 15 minutes in the hot water bath canner so if you have a combination of pint and 8 ounce that's fine too so you want to make sure that you take the headspace amount before and then you want to make sure you really debubble this because if you don't you're going to end up with bubbles along the side of the jar um, and also you want to make sure that after you debubble that you recheck your headspace and adjust it if necessary. Also write, wipe off the rim with a damp paper towel or cloth and this ensures that your jar will seal properly. If it doesn't seal properly, you have a risk of siphoning, and siphoning's, I mean, the food is still edible, but it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> and then take your rim and make sure that it's on fingertip tight. I like to screw mine down and then give it a nice tug. 
to make sure it's tight. And it goes right into the water bath canner. Make sure that you, after you cook it, you take the lid off, shut the heat off, leave it for five minutes, and then take the jars out, and that will also prevent it from siphoning. Hope you enjoy this recipe. Thanks for watching. Bye.